So this is the new Path of Travel analysis tool inside of Revit 2020. There is finally a reason for architects to come over and visit the Analyze tab. On my Analyze tab here, all the way to the right, um, the Path of Travel tool. It's pretty straightforward to use. It's a pretty nifty new addition here inside of 2020. I just click to activate the tool. I go into my Place Path of Travel tool. It, it it, you got to think of this like a like a detail item, so it's view specific. And actually, here you'll see I've got in my modify bar drop down selecting the line style. So this works based on your project line styles. So if you need another path of travel line type, you just build one in here. You'll see we've got path of travel as the default, and I've added one called path of travel too. And it's really just a matter of clicking where you need that travel to start, and then where you need it to end. And obviously now it's kind of a straight line, but once I click the second time, Revit is gonna take just a couple seconds and it does some pretty nifty analysis around the 3D model elements in this view. And it does this path of travel for me. And so wherever I clicking on starting and then click to end the path of travel, it keeps going and, and does that analysis for me. So I've got over here on the left-hand side, these, these, these model elements, these families that are loaded in here with these tables. Over here on the right, I've duplicated kind of what they look like with, with just uh, line work. And so now if I come over and try to do path of travel this way, you'll notice it's just a straight shot. It goes directly through there. It doesn't, it doesn't care about those at all. This is another great reason to be building your model fully, wholly, and get all the elements in there. Um, underneath here, there's a menu that you can fly out, and this gives me the rules that it's going to follow. So by default, Revit wants to pay attention to all the categories except what you have checked here. So obviously doors are unchecked because typically when we build our door elements, the panels are closed and, and all we see when they're open is just line work. So they're not really open there. But if I do want to ignore casework, if I want to make sure I'm skipping over any sort of um, other components or, or categories of elements, I can check the boxes here and then the path of travel will completely ignore that as it's doing that calculation to work its way around there. In addition down here, this is kind of the slice through my model of the height, the what it's gonna analyze. So anything that is between eight inches and six foot eight inches that is in these categories um, that is not hidden, that is not demolished and that is not underlay, it's going to try to figure out the fastest way around those elements. Um, like I said, do path of travel. I can just use another category type here, another line type, path of travel too, if I need to break those up. But I made this one red and dashed. You can see, oh, it's decided this is the zippiest way around here. All of these guys, once I select on them, they've got instance properties over here. Um, it gives me the, the length, which is most cr critical of all, obviously. I can change the line style here. They're totally schedulable. I hope you've been seeing my schedule fill up as I build it up. I've got the level associated with it. It gives me the length information and the view in here as well. So since those are all schedulable elements, I can filter down through those in my schedule as well. Speaking of filters, if I go into my view filters, I can create a new uh, filter here based on the path of travel tool as well. So I can start new and we'll just call it path of travel two and I can come down here and find my path of travel lines and one of the nice things here is I can base that on um, length and it can be uh, a range there so it can be less than or greater than um, and kind of give me these these between definitions so I can say anything that's more than 20 feet make red and dotted and anything less than 20 feet make green and solid so I've I obviously broke it up over here with just different types of lines, but I can use my view filters to break that out. Um, so it, it's a great addition. It's a nice tool. I'm pretty excited about it. There's a, a lot of potential to use, and I think folks are going to find a lot of neat uh, uses out of it.